Excellent. I mean, this is a, a I hate to say remake. He made the original, a, a, an original United States of America, which is, a, as in terms of its filmic modality, is a very, very different film. It's a road movie shot from the you know, window of a moving car. It was made in George 70s, is it? Yeah, it was made in the mid-70s, and it's shot from the passenger seat of the back of a car looking through a series of... Uh, a series of different um, landscapes with a couple in the foreground. With Bessie Gordon, is that right? Uh, we don't know who's in it. No. I think, but the film was made with Bessie Gordon. Oh, right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, there are two, uh, one two silhouetted passengers, collaborating but that's exactly. yeah, basically. Um, yeah, so th- this is a re this is a re uh, re re reimagining of the idea of the United States of America as a what does it you know the landscapes of America in a kind of Peter Hutton esque. Um, poetics of landscape vibe. So we get a about an hour and a half of film which trawls through 50, well, 53 states. Um, Puerto Rico is included. Puerto Rico is included as a territory or dependency. Um, and we get a series of static landscapes, uh, landscape shots, um, which are about, I think, three, I suppose, maths, three or four minutes long uh, in duration each. Um, they very little happen. So long, you think? I think it's said that long. Some of them said shorter, but I think there was a sense uh-huh. of if it's a hundred minutes and no, uh, and there's fifty states, yeah. surely it would only be states. two minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's shorter. I think because I was I was trying to count one. I think it's about tops one hundred and twenty seconds. Okay, well there we go then. Yeah, they yeah. are sh- they are short bites. We're not getting kind of uh, super long Michael Snow exposures of a particular landscape. These are very fixed frames. Um, it, I, I mean, I found it to be a complete revelation. It's an extremely funny film. You know, um, there is a, I suppose as a spoiler, which are we pro spoilers seeing as this is a festival? You just have to flag it with, um, okay, so I don't have the beep on. The okay, so imagine, imagine a beep, imagine <coughs> a beep in your head right now. So basically the, the kind of, um, it, you know, as a structural film, it has a kind of overarching irony to it. And the irony here is that all of the landscapes were shot in California. That's what we learn afterwards. But we do get these places, we get like, get like Gary, Indiana, and we get, uh, you know, we get, uh, parts of Norfolk, Virginia. And we get Paris, Tennessee. Paris, Tennessee. But really not evocative. Paris, Texas. Yeah. No, we get these really evocative place names, actually. I think he chose them. You know, he's got the whole smorgasbord of America to choose from, and it felt like he chose the names and places for a sense of irony anyway. But more than that, I think also there was a sense of relish about the sheer uh, variety of... Uh, American place names, the mm. language drawn from, so yeah, you know, you have all over the world. Yeah, exactly. You have some of the francophone, some of the Dutch ones, yeah. some of the uh, many of the South American, uh, the Native American ones. But this central gag at the end, I mean, mm. I think I felt like we were the only ones laughing at this. Maybe I, th- I find others. it hilarious. It's literally one of the funniest but jokes I've ever I seen. Mean, it's fucking you know. great because you, you know, you've, you've uh, there is a sense of you know a grim finality to a structural film like this when you know the ki- conceit has made it clear. Yeah, where it's ending? It's ending on Wyoming, or was yeah, it must end on Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah, Wyoming it goes is where to the it all ends. Yeah, and uh, there's no surprises, right? There can be no surprises, and yet then, up on screen flashes the location of the origin of every one of these shots, and yeah, it's a kind of grim parody of the idea of um, the ugly American who would be like, "Why would I ever go anywhere else? We've got it yeah. all here." It's all it's the Californian who's like, "Why would I even need to travel beyond the elsewhere? states? Borders. Because within the dream factory yeah. of the states, we have it all." I think it's yeah. in that sense as well. I think for the American audience, none of us are American. I suppose there's a, the, there's a slight possibility that an American viewer might clock this earlier. So there's a kind of slightly delayed reaction for different audiences over the world. I assume the Polish audience might be, but we we didn't know until the end. So for us, the gag was completely fresh. Perhaps there's a one in a million chance that somebody would clock this while they're watching it. So I think it opens itself up to these kind of fractal Well, I think actually the readings. California one, yeah, is, a, is sort of a giveaway. Mm. Because at that point, something, something unsettling happens because you have the overlay of... So most of the shots are silent. Yeah. And uh, over about five or six of the locations you have... Uh, uh, you have some non diegetic sound, which is kind of passed in a sound. kind of diegetic way. It's a bit of a radio scramble over the right, top. Right, exactly. And yeah. it dimmed down such that it sounds like it could be coming from a nearby car. Um, and over a building that we later learned to be Ronald Reagan's Sacramento house, mm-hmm. you have Eisenhower's speech uh, on uh, the post war consensus about the military industri- about industrial the, complex. Yeah, where he yeah. warns about this emerging military industrial complex in the, uh, in the 50s. Um, and there is a there is definitely a political tenor to uh, the film, and not just at such moments. The things that he chooses to display as part of this encyclopedia, this inventory of Americana, mm. um, 
you can put them on. I mean, one comparison that can occur to me is this film by Jürgen Lett, like Postcards from America. Mm. But that's very much an outsider's viewpoint yeah. uh, on a scrapbook of, you know, Americana. But here, he's interested particularly in uh, infrastructure, industry, mm. decaying industry, and in brutalized post-industrial landscapes. But also I mean, on we military see like installations, on the kind of miniaturized yeah, kind yeah, of hinterlands yeah. of American, you know, the American landscape as well. Right, and it's a film that begins in this enormous bucolic kind of rock display in Alabama and ends in this canyon and ends in a private property uh, mm. uh, indication in, in Wyoming. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I think there's a sense of, so to speak to those kind of ironies and those contradictions, there are mirrorings and reflections that happen between them. Um, in terms of the shot choice, the types of shot he's composing, there's also within the frames themselves, there are these moments of, I found kind of laugh out loud humor. You know, there's a river very early on which shoots up the very center of the frame and then it bends just at the very edge of the horizon. There's these little kind of, you know, almost like, you know, an Islamic rug that has one imperfect stitch on them. I was looking for these kind of imperfect stitches in each frame. You get other ones where you get a couple walking across a landscape in the very, very far distance. And then you get a plane going overhead much faster than them. Mm -hmm, so you've mm -hmm. got these little kind of, dramas unfolding within the frame itself that are kind of, I felt funny. You've also got the fact that he's drawing on the luminaries of American political life. I mean, yeah, not only Eisenhower, but Stokely Carmichael, Woody mm -hmm. Guthrie. We've got these kind of, yeah, there's also Alicia Keys who's doing a rendition <laughs> of, of Imagine. Imagine. In a particularly kind of sac lacrimose and like schmaltzy manner. Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it, that song. In, in a godforsaken like uh, parking lot. Yeah, right? shot against a very flat wall that's kind of yeah. decaying anyway. And I think in, in a sense, he's like, it's a kind of nod by him to how little you know America because he's kind of disrupting in a biggest a structural sense of expectations about understanding totally this country through film right. and identifying these landscapes mm -hmm. as an outsider and at the same time I don't know imbuing them with a kind of Im immense poetry but also just great humor it was probably one of the funniest films I've seen for sure for sure during this festival and I'm not exaggerating just for and, the and sake I mean of it, it, but it's the humor also comes from the structural conceit of every shot having a particular duration such that even when you're suddenly enraptured by the beauty of one of these landscapes mm. or as with one of the spoken uh, interludes like with the Carmichael he cuts him off yeah because it's just like the hammer falls where it falls the time I mean, is done it times up you know and that shot actually is uh, observing a cotton field as well yeah, 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 it, yeah. Get, it gets blunt and when I saw that shot it was the first time in a film that it felt kind of kind of heavy handed but then when he cut him off Again, it's just he's, he's dis disrupting our kind of ability to engage with these discourses, I suppose. So, yeah, I, my, my take is it's a, it's a sumptuously beautiful film. It's beautifully shot. Uh, he, he just barely steps a foot wrong in terms of his composition. Um, it's got this, like, the closest parallel I can find to certain parts of it. It's not just like someone like Ansel Adams, obviously, as the, you know, the, the grandfather of American landscape photography, but someone like Sean Baker, who photographs parts of Texas and the South. So... With, it, with a great kind of gentleness and lyricism. You know, these kind of smokestacks and uh, factories are always in the kind of far distance. He's got this great love for banal, nowhere, Americasville, mm. um, which is... But, yeah. I mean, this is also of a piece with the CalArts generation to which he belongs, mm -hmm. like people like Ed Ruscher and, you know, Ed, I was particularly thinking of Ed Ruscher's gas stations and his, like, mm. photography of the entirety of the Sunset Strip, you know, this yep, fixation yep, yep. on strip malls and... Uh, like Venturi, it's kind of got that... Right, yep. de desolate Noahsville. And he deliberately chooses these, you know, what Smithson would have called non-sites, these yep. like spaces of no signification whatsoever. When yep. he goes to New York, it's midtown somewhere, you can tell, but it's like uh, uh, completely outside of the given, received cinematic understanding of yeah, the city. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite an empty, plain... Uh, I, I suppose small side street that leads on to a slightly busier grid street mm. with occasional car passing. And it's, it's one of the great things that he uh, manages to add these, these ironies. He manages to trip you up with each shot. It makes anticipating the next shot really pregnant with tension. So he's managed to find a way for to, you know, creating a landscape film 
but imbuing it with immense narrative mm -hmm. potential. It's Tension without suspense. Everyone yeah, should become yeah. a structural filmmaker. Absolutely. This is the and and, this is and the we are this. structural podcasters in the sense that we are only allowing <laughs> ourselves oh, okay. a given amount of time, 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 to, time to talk time. about each podcast. Uh, each but it was film. great. It was fucking and, amazing. Uh, really and um, yeah, I will be seeing for listeners, a, a chance to see this film again would be probably the experimental strand of the BFI Film Festival. That's certainly where I'll be um, seeing it if you want to come and axe murder me. Uh, and it will be probably showing in, in various art house, in various sort of moving image institutes. Yeah, this will be everywhere. Um, around it it won't be everywhere. It won't be in your <laughs> local well, view. Well, West in our niche <laughs> everywhere. In our uh, it will be in your niche everywhere. 